Hey everyone, it's Alexander the Real Mr. Robinson. Welcome to the channel. Welcome to another Godzilla watch along. We are doing 2002's Godzilla against Mecha Godzilla, which is the second best film in the Millennium series. I told you several times that this week we'd be doing the two best films of the Millennium series. And uh yep, yeah, we're just gonna like before we hop into it, I wanna welcome everyone who is in the chat right now. Um, got all the regulars there. For those of you who are watching, uh, like l watching but not interacting with the chat, I encourage you to join along. If you guys are watching this in post, uh, then I hope you guys are, I hope you guys can consider joining one of these live watch alongs. Well, live. <laughs> and, uh, yeah. Uh, so again, this is a movie that's, from all the movies from here on out, with the exception of the anime trilogy, you can rent uh, on you can rent digitally. Yeah, I may have said that a couple of times beforehand, but if you don't own a physical copy of it, then you can rent it digitally. Yeah, and I want to make something uh, point out something right off the top, something I usually wouldn't do. Um, so I'm going to be watching my DVD copy of the movie. The reason for that is because back when Sony was releasing the DVDs of these movies, they uh, the subtitles that were featured were often based off the English dub, which sometimes can be very inaccurate, as we saw with GMK. Um, Godzilla against Mechagodzilla is the first instance where the subtitles are actually based off the Japanese script. Um, and the reason I'm not watching it on Blu-ray is that for some reason the Blu-ray subtitles are uh, set to the dub and not the actual Japanese script. So that's why I kept my Blu-ray around. I know back when I reviewed the Criterion Collection of the Showa era movies, I said you could get rid of your uh, like non-classic media DVDs. And I'll still stand by that uh, uh, because there's no reason to watch the dubs. Um, well, with the exception of Godzilla vs. Gigan because you get the sil the hilarious scene where Godzilla and Garrus are talking. But uh, yeah, the only reason I have my Godzilla vs. Mechagodzilla DVD still, despite having the Blu-ray, is because of the proper subtitles. And uh, that's all I have to say. And uh, we're just going to hop into this right now. Once again, welcome everyone who is in the chat. Uh, again, if you're watching this in post-production, I encourage you to join these live. And I'm going to start the movie right now. Once again, uh, I am st I've am started a blog on a tw tum almost said Twitch, uh, Tumblr. Twitch is something that I would like to try to do in the future. Uh, no huge promises there. Uh, but if you want to follow my writings, my writing journey on Tumblr, then you can go that. Once again, patreon.com forward slash the real Mr. Robinson. If you'd like to help support the channel financially, uh, if we make it to 25 patron patrons, I will start doing live watch alongs exclusively for patrons, uh, uh besides what I'm doing because of the pandemic, uh, with. Godzilla, Star Wars, Harry Potter, and the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Uh, but if you cannot, if you can't support financially, do not stress about that at all. Uh, just subscribing to YouTube and uh, sharing the videos is all that you need to do in order to support the channel, or that's the bare minimum you need to do, and that's totally fine. Um, and with that said, we're just gonna hop into it right now. Oh, I. My headphones aren't even plugged into the portable Blu-ray player. So let me fix that. The movie's playing by itself. Do not play the movie yet, guys. Do not play the movie yet, because I'm not ready. Okay, I am ready now. And we're gonna push the play button right about... I'm delaying this as long as possible. Now. I am not going to miss that horse when we move on to the movies past the Millennium Series.
You know, the the DVD, um, it actually doesn't look that bad compared to... Uh, on this portable Blu-ray player. I mean, sure, the Blu-ray would look better, but uh, this... This DVD doesn't look too bad. The year 1999. Huh. Just a whole row of soldiers going... Roger, 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 Roger. Yeah, the music is once again great because this is another. This is from the same crew that did Godzilla vs. Megaguirus, um, director. Masaki Tezuka, uh, composer Michiro Oshima, and uh, this brings back Sotomo Kitagawa as Godzilla. There he is. I like how I, one thing I like in the dub is that the, like when he's talking about the weather, there's a point where he says it's huge and it's getting bigger by the minute. And that's as Godzilla's rising in the background. There's Shinoda. Shinoda. Well, that sucks, uh, Gizel 100, but hey, you're here. You're here now, that's all that's important. Okay, so this organization is called AMF, the Anti-Megalosaurus Force. Definitely a better um, name than G-Graspers. <laughs> And they brought back the Mazer Cannons from War of the Gargantuas. This is the first time they've ever appeared in a Godzilla movie. It's okay, you could get a well, actually, that house looked pretty good, so good luck finding a new one. I do like this design of Godzilla as well. Um, like it, it's like they went back to a less uh, like sharp version of the two thousand suit. Like like the spines don't look as sharp as the ones in for the Godzilla two thousand suit. But it's still, this Godzilla's still charcoal gray and breeds blue atomic breath, so. It's a, it's a good mix of 
the classic Godzilla and the first millennium Godzilla. This scene is straight out of War of the Gargantuas. Like, minus the rain, this is beat for beat um, War of the Gargantuas. You got the monster in the trees, the Mazer cannons on uh, a road on the side of a mountain. Except the Mazers this time don't do anything. Funny that Godzilla would attack the mountain and not the vehicles. Well, they knew the job was dangerous when they took it. This is beat, like, also the setup is beat for beat, uh, Mega Gearus. Except this time, except in this case, it's actually more her fault that, uh, those men got killed than in Mega Gearus. You know, I don't really understand why they just didn't call it Godzilla versus Mechagodzilla 3. I mean, because they all, they named, in the States, they already named the Heisei one Mechagodzilla 2. So I'm not sure why this one was, wasn't called Mechagodzilla 3. I guess because, like, like, since Mechagodzilla 2 was not the second Mechagodzilla movie, that might have been why. To avoid confusion. And I established right off the bat that this is a second Godzilla. Like in the previous movies, it's like... They kind of alluded to... Well, Mega Gears, it was clear that that was the first Godzilla because of uh, revisionist history. Uh, but it's this is the first movie in the Millennium series that makes it clear that this is the second one. Hey, there's Kumi Mizuno. I haven't seen her in a Godzilla movie since Ebira. Now that looks CGI. Like they like even though they just had stock footage of the first movie, this sequence here is brand new because in this timeline the skeleton didn't disintegrate. And it like that looked like a CGI 1954 Godzilla moving around, but I've seen there's behind the scenes footage uh mainly on Wikizilla that shows that they actually built a uh, prop of the 1954 Godzilla.
In the dub, they say that they killed Mothra with the heat guns, which is wrong. So that's cool that not only... It's cool that um, they made um, this movie not only connected to the original 1954 Godzilla, but also to several other Godzilla movies in the other other movies in the Showa era, not just Godzilla. Like, I mean, in the movie, we're only going by the movies. Um, Mothra and War of the Gargantuas and Space Amoeba are featured. But for some reason, there are other movies that are... Like, Toho said there are other movies that um, are connected. And one of them is King Kong Escapes. So... So, I mean... I don't, I don't know. That's That's a weird thought, huh? Okay, um, first of all, we'll get back to Akane later because I actually have a lot to say about this character. Um, and, like, mainly why she makes this one of the best films in not just the Millennium series, but ever in the in the Godzilla franchise. But let me see if I can pull up what... Um, let me see if I can pull up what other movies are connected to to Godzilla against Mechagodzilla. Because, uh... Because, uh, GZL100 says, Wait, so Kong and Godzilla are in the same universe before the Monsterverse? Uh, you could... They're on Wikizilla's, um... I think the Wikizilla, uh, YouTube page. Oh, there's the bro The scientist there. That's the brother from The Return of Godzilla. Uh, let me see. I'm sorry. I'm just trying to find that. Um... Okay. Apparently that video doesn't exist. Uh... I do kind of like in this movie how um, Mechagodzilla just doesn't pop up out of thin air in like a year, like in the Heisei series. That they they actually tried to build a um, some sort of science to his creation. Oh, that that's a fake ass diver. Like he does, he's not even moving.
you know, this would have been a perfect opportunity to bring in the Ifakube theme, but uh, this and um, the next movie, Tokyo SOS, are not um, are the only movies in the Millennium series that do not feature the Godzilla theme. Okay, so here's the um, here's the continuity of the Kiryu films. Like, what's featured in what's considered canon with this series here, this particular incarnation of Godzilla. Uh, okay, let me, if I can't, if I can find a picture big enough for me to say it. Hold on, folks. Give me a second. Okay, here we go. You ready? For those of you who are watching. Um, so in the Kiryu saga, um, they already established that the original 1954 Godzilla, Mothra, and War of the Gargantuas are featured, and Space Amoeba, as we'll see in the next movie. But also in this continuity, there's Rodan... Varen the Unbelievable, Gorath, Atragon, Dogara, Frankenstein vs. Baragon, and King Kong Escapes. So that means that both King Kong and Frankenstein's monster actually existed at some point in this series. Which, which I don't really, I mean... I prefer to get my information from the movies, and as far as the movies are concerned, only Mothra, War of the Gargantuas, and Space Amoeba count. Everything else doesn't, especially King Kong Escapes. That's that's too preposterous to be in this continuity. Especially since there's no acknowledgement of those other movies in this series. I do like this little relationship between um, the main scientist and his daughter. It's not. It's not quite up there with. Um, I actually think it's a little better than um, the relationship in Godzilla two thousand. Hmm. Great parenting. I hate vegetables, so that's why I'm not eating it. Um, Jizo 100. How the hell did we not get another Godzilla vs. Kong, King Kong movie? Simple answer. Money. Wow, that worked, that worked out in her favor. One month later. Uh, wait, like... King uh, Toho wanted to do another movie like that in the Millennium series. But uh, the Turner Company, like, basically... Ha I guess... It it's confusing. But uh, the te the, they had to pay money to the Turner Company, uh, run by Ted Turner, 
uh, to use the rights for um, King Kong, but uh, King Kong was just too expensive. And then um, the other plan was to use to just use uh, Mechanic Kong and have that fight Godzilla, but even using Mechanic Kong was too similar to using King Kong. So that's why we never got another movie until just recently, even though it's not coming out until 2021. Hopefully. So the time jump's a little weird because, in that sense, Akane has been behind a desk for three, let's see, 2001, yeah, three years. You gotta wonder who who was the scientist that decided, let's give uh, this Mecha Godzilla a jetpack and little um, wrist lasers. Oh, I'm sorry, four years because this movie takes place in 2003, not 2002. That kid has an age today. Our flow says that's true. I. I never really put that together. Three and a half years. So yeah, like what makes Akane more interesting of a character is that unlike, um, I forget her name, in Megagiris, uh, who was just consumed with like vengeful hatred for Godzilla, she feels unbelievable guilt. Huh? Um, and she feels unbelievable guilt about what happened. And... Um, sees this opportunity to be in the Kiryu squad as like redemption, especially with that dude right there.
I want the, that hat. Huh? Those um, those Kiryu hat, those Kiryu Squad hats. Uh, I I tried finding um those hats like on the internet to see if they were if Toho had even made them like publicly available. Uh, either they didn't, or they did. But they're super expensive. I'm going to look that up right now. Okay, there is one on... I think there's one on eBay. 20 bucks? And not just that, but... Um, it's... It's tempting. It's very tempting. Okay, so they're not... They do exist. Hmm, okay. That... You know, the... Um... The guy in charge of Key Squad is pretty confident to let Akane not only in the group, but to have her be the one to control Kiryu. Yeah, the way this is structured, it just feels very... It really does feel like um, Masaki Tezuka uh, went... Um, hold on. I have to make sure I get his name right. Because I feel like I'm... Masaki Tezuka, yeah. This movie, like the way it's structured, it just feels like he went... I'm just going to do what I did with Godzilla vs. Megaguirus, but get it right. <laughs> Smooth, huh? The Kudu theme is uh, that she composed is awesome. I was so when I first saw this movie, I really was confused on why uh, they kept calling Mechagodzilla Kudu. But what does the um,
And here we get the, like, Kudu's complete, but now we get the obligatory, here's how the science works. <laughs> yes, after Final, I'm not finishing this with Final Wars. I'm going all the way to King of the Monsters. Perfect timing. Just as Q is complete, Godzilla decides to come back. Yeah, that, like, I talked about um, how the G-Force Mechagodzilla is just slow and sluggish. Like, in close quarters combat, it's unable to, um, it's unable to function right. And, uh, Kiryu lacks, like, Kiryu lacks, um, the firepower, but Kiryu's better at close quarters combat and, uh, that absolute zero cannon is devastating. So, I think Kiryu is my favorite interp. I think he is the best interpretation of Mechagodzilla. The rest of the world just panicked. Yeah, if you look at that and think it's a ship, then... Uh, you you need help. What are the odds that Godzilla would show up the day we unveil Kyuu? So all these non-Japanese speaking, all those non-Japanese speaking actors couldn't even say Godzilla properly or correctly. Like, um, again, Kiryu, um, it's interesting the science that they come up with for Kiryu. They have to transport him, um, with those planes just so he has enough, um, fighting time. And all, most of his weapons come from those weird, like, cannons on it, like those weird, like, Shoulder attachments and a jetpack. It's sad that there would never be um, 
that there hasn't been a great um, official Mechagodzilla after this movie. Because <clears throat> I know there's Ready Player One, which is a cool-looking Mechagodzilla, but that's not really official. And unfortunately, like, the next incarnation we'd see of Mechagodzilla, he would be just a giant city. Like, ugh. Dude just said, don't use your cars. But he gets, he just like leans out and says, hey, move it. Okay, so that, um, that baseball player that they just uh, established... Um, that, that, that baseball player there, if I'm correct, I think the reason he cameoed in this movie is because he had the nickname of, uh, Godzilla. No, Ready Player One, I, the reason I say Ready Player One is not official is because it's not a Godzilla movie. It's just a giant mishmash of pop culture that has a Godzilla character in it. Who are these people that like the anime Mechagodzilla? Like, I, I want names, damn it. Because it's just, like, that's just a city. That's not Mechagodzilla, it's a city. You know, there's something about, um, I never really noticed this uh, until now, but there's something about the way Satomo Kitagawa plays Godzilla, where it feels like Godzilla's always, like, bracing himself for an attack. Like, right there. I don't understand. I kind of don't understand why Godzilla's not moving. Like, he just kind of lets Kiryu attack him. You know, Matt Frank uh, pointed something very interesting about this sequence here that doesn't really bother me, but it's also something that I never actually um, notice. So he says, um, back in 2014, when he was on oneofus.net, he talked about how they wanted to make a scene... Uh, where Kiyu goes on the rampage, but they also had to have Godzilla not be in the scene as well. So he points out that in any other movie where Godzilla would just get ruthlessly attacked like that, Godzilla would not stand for it. He would retaliate, but uh, Godzilla just heads back into the ocean. 
So he he said it was just kind of like a lazy writer's. Um, he said it used to like it was kind of a lazy writer's decision just to get Kiryu by himself. Huh? But I kind of never like I never thought of it that way, or I never thought of that. But and a defense I'd have is that. The Godzilla, this Godzilla's never faced anything more powerful than him, so he's, like, kind of taken back. But this sequence is a good excuse to, like, get an evil Mechagodzilla again. Which, I mean, the clever thing is that in order to get an evil mecha Godzilla is to have him be built around the skeleton of the original Godzilla. And it's pretty much like that original concept Godzilla versus Ghost Godzilla. Where you could say the spirit of the like the DNA computer just takes control over Kiryu and makes it think it's Godzilla. So, was Kiryu programmed to have red eyes to distinguish it, uh, to let it know that it's evil? To let us know that it's evil? Or is that the AI working? Because, unlike the G-Force Mechagodzilla, this one is known to have some sort of artificial intelligence. As we'll see much later on in this and the next movie. Ooh, that CG looked rough. Huh? Akane's like, don't stop there, move. Huh? Gotta get out of here. Boom. Slow motion explosion. Jeez, that's a long time. Again, going back to how this movie's structured like Megagiris. Uh, um, in any other instance, like, if the super weapon built to go against Godzilla uh, proved to be ineffective, or in this case, problematic, then um, they would just shut it down. I said it about Roland Emmerich's Godzilla, and I'll say it here. That shouldn't be possible. Like, the building should not be standing after a giant hole. Um, just, just after there's a giant hole in the building.
That's a cool shot. I would say Destroya. Destroya and Shin Godzilla are better than this or GMK. Hey, a leader that's actually willing to take responsibility for his actions. God, I wish we had one of those right now. Wish we had a leader that would take responsibility for their actions and know when they screw up. That's the only time ever since Cutie has been established that they call it Mecha Godzilla. There's a clear, there's an age gap between these two. Like it's it's some like I know like the romantic element in Godzilla movies has never really played up. Um but that's some like I've always had an issue in in movies where there's like a love there's like a romantic subplot and the guy is like 10 or 20 years older than the girl like that I don't know okay now that I found out that those hats are actually not that uh, pricey I'm tempted to get one myself <laughs> I have to get the there's a g-force one also might have to get that as well The word. Yeah, it is funny that three and a half years later, um, you 
Yeah, three and a half years later, she still looks the same. We don't we don't talk about Michael Bay's Transformers here. You know, we don't talk about that series in my house. <laughs> Wow, way to look down on yourself, <laughs> saying your life is worthless. So yeah, from here on out, like, it's... Like, her story is pretty much, like, redeeming herself in the face of those who don't trust her. And perfect timing, because Godzilla is now ready to come back. <laughs> Godzilla has such wide... This incarnation of Godzilla has such expressive eyes. Oh, Mr. Bond, I'm about to I'm about to irritate you more because I do think that Final Wars is very much like Michael Bay's Transformers. Not to the same extreme, but definitely like we'll, we'll get to it next week. We'll get to it next week. I'll elaborate more on why I feel like Final Wars is like a Michael Bay Transformers. Man, this this movie is going by fast. Uh, like it didn't seem that long ago that Godzilla popped up and just retreated back into the ocean. Uh,
Wait, where is... Was Godzilla even in that, like, video footage? I mean, there... It's understandable why there's hesitation to send Kiryu out. Because... Like, what are, like, you know, they don't want to risk the chance of Kiryu running wild again. One thing we can agree on is that Final Wars is better than the 1998 Godzilla. It's better than... The anime trilogy is better than that. And I hate the anime trilogy. Please don't tell me that plant started to bloom because of the power of love. There's the major from Megagirus. Yeah, Miss. Yeah, they just put Mas Masato Tanaka in as a cameo. Here's a here's a cool example of Kiryu's AI working. Where it's like, they're too far away, or they feel like they're too late, and then Kiryu just says. Hey, I've got a jetpack. Let me go. I'll get there faster than you guys. <laughs> okay, that CGI is not too bad, actually. Like, I think because Kiryu's metal, so... It's easier to make a, a artificial texture through... CG than an organic texture. Although, with this movie and the next two, there are some terrible um, composite shots where the monsters are like moving quickly or flying around. That's not CG and they just look completely motionless. 
Like this shot coming up right. Not that one. There, where Godzilla just flies through the buildings. That does not that those kinds of effects never look good. But it's cool how like Q just comes rushing in and just just slams into Godzilla. <laughs> And here we get the big final battle now. And this time Godzilla's not running. Um, Mecha Godzilla is the only... The only monster to have actually killed Godzilla. Uh, in Mecha Godzilla 2, Mecha Godzilla killed him. But uh, soon after he was resurrected by Rodan... But still, I'm going to give Mechagodzilla... I'm going to give Mechagodzilla credit for being the only monster to kill Godzilla. No, Mecha Go the first Mecha Godzilla straight up killed uh the second Mecha Godzilla straight up killed Godzilla. Like Godzilla was dead before Rodan came in. This is the only like much like how Godzilla vs. King Ghidorah was the only movie. Uh, where Godzilla and Ghidorah fought with no allies. Uh, this is the only movie where Godzilla and Mechagodzilla have fought and neither one of them has a have monster allies. That has to be the only instance where Godzilla charges his atomic breath and then cancels it because he got distracted.
So again, this is why, this is why I think this Mecha Godzilla is the best. Uh, Cause he's he's slick, he's a dirty fighter, and yeah, he can hold his own against Godzilla in close combat, uh, which is something the other two couldn't do. Well, there, here comes a really bad special effects shot. Uh, right here. Where Godzilla's completely... Where both Godzilla and Kiryu are completely still. Like Godzilla takes some punishment in this movie. Well, that didn't work out, did it? <laughs> the the scientist that created Absolute Zero, his reactions to when something go wrong are priceless. <laughs> Like she's going anyway. It's a shame they never, uh, Toho never made a Mecha Godzilla that could be controlled like uh, Pacific Rim. Because now if they were to do something like that, uh, people would just say, you copied Pacific Rim. Never thought that they need a Batman grappling hook, but uh, hey, that worked out.
Godzilla. Godzilla wins at everything. There's that uh, baseball player again. Okay, I don't watch Evangelion, but I've seen that video that like did side by side comparisons of Evangelion and Shin Godzilla, and that like countrywide blackout or citywide blackout shot looked like something from Evangelion. Man, like, the manual controls for Kiryu inside of Kiryu just seem very cold and unwelcoming. I like how it, like, the power source for getting more energy is the spines. I do wish they kind of played up the, um... Since Kiryu is obviously artificial... Obviously has artificial intelligence. I wish they played up the dynamic between Akane and Kiryu. That didn't work. That, like, it's like Godzilla was waiting for Kiryu to come back up. Kiryu's sure taking a beating from that atomic breath. This this montage looks so sappy. I guess it's important to show I Guess it is important for um to show that even though she thinks her life is worthless, she did have a lot of people supporting her. So it's now daytime or I like early morning. So that means the little girl stayed up all night pretty much. So wait, did did the back pilot just go screw this, I'm out of here? Or did uh Hayama inject him? Yeah, this moment, it's like, Hayama's still, like, very, before that, he was still very untrustworthy of Akane, and now he's, now he, like, pretty much put himself on the line to save her and Kiryu from getting blasted again.
That yeah, there are some shots uh, that do not look good. And thank God the explosion didn't blow his limbs off. <laughs> Like, that would look so much cooler if the CGI was better. But even after all that, uh, Godzilla is still alive. I think this is the first movie where they defeat Godzilla, but he willingly just retreats. Because, like, they either, like, physically get rid of Godzilla or they straight up kill him. But Godzilla has, like, a giant hole in his chest, a broken arm. So he's just, like, he just has enough. Like, I'm heading back into the ocean. And even the way, like, this part, like, this shot here, again, very parallel to Megagirus in how it ends. And 
And yeah, there's never been a, um, in terms of like human characters, uh, no movie has since like, there, there's only a handful of Godzilla movies where the human characters are really good. And, uh, the next best one is Shin Godzilla, in my opinion. Like, the 2014 movie, I think, gets a lot of flack for its characters. Um, but, yeah. Uh, it's, yeah, it's, it's good. And Akane really makes this movie better than it normally would. Especially considering that Masuki Te Masaki Tezuka did make the worst film in the Millennium series and the lowest grossing of the Millennium series. So it's amazing that Toho decided to bring him back. Um, it's like with Justin Lin did Tokyo Drift, which was the worst film in the series. It's a miracle Universal brought him back for Fast and Furious. And then... Um, all of a sudden, he'd be the one who's single-handedly responsible for making that the series that it is. So, yeah, talk about a, a redemption. Like, not just for Akane in her redemption story, but for uh, Masaki Tezuka for, again, making the worst film in, this ser in the Millennium series. And then he goes on to make the second best film in the Millennium series. Too bad it goes downhill from here in terms of the Millennium series. Like, I, I think the next movie is just vastly inferior. Um, but we'll get to that uh, next Tuesday with Tokyo SOS. So yeah, like with um, Megagirus, there is a post credit scene here. Oh, it came by. Is, are we already there? No, it was just a... That was just a random shot of the plant. Okay. This is the first time I... Like... This is one of my favorite Godzilla movies. But I think this is the first time I've actually sat through the credits. And... I'm noticing all these very weird... Uh, shots of a plant. And then... Um, like the Kiryu help... That's weird. Well, yeah, I'm going to give the rundown as the credits are going on. Uh, this has been Godzilla against Mechagodzilla. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, if you're watching this live, uh, once again, I always appreciate your support. If you're watching this in post-production, I encourage you to watch these live. Even if you're not a Godzilla fan, you could still treat these just like a Q&A. Um, and once again, uh, I will be doing... Once the Godzilla series is done, and I, with the last one being King of the Monsters, I will be tackling the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Speaking of which, we're at the post credit sequence. I mean, technically, yes, like, neither Kiryu or Mechagodzilla won, but it's, 
it's a victory for Akane because now she doesn't feel worthless and she's gained the trust of everyone that doubted her at first. So yeah, this like that end credit scene doesn't it doesn't set up anything. It's just a nice little wrap up uh, that would would have felt out of place uh, beforehand. And yeah, there, there's only seven Godzilla movies that have post credit sequences. The two um, the two Masaki Tezuka the three Masaki Tezuka movies. Uh, the anime trilogy and King of the Monsters. So yeah, again, uh, next week will be uh, the last two films of the Millennium series, Tokyo SOS and Final Wars. And then the week after that, we move on to another batch of really good Godzilla movies, the 2014 film in Shin Godzilla. And then it's part one and two of the anime trilogy. And then after that is part three, and then we finish it all off with King of the Monsters. So we only got four weeks left. Four weeks left of Godzilla movies. Uh, that's that's insane. So once again, thank you guys for tuning in. If you all want to help support the channel financially, you can go over to patreon.com forward slash the real Mr. Robinson. For $1 a month, you get to support the channel. Um and when we hit 25 patrons, I will start doing live watch-alongs uh, exclusively for you guys who pledge $1 a month. Uh, if you cannot support the channel financially, that's totally fine. Just uh, subscribing to uh, YouTube and sharing, liking the videos is uh is support enough. Like you're doing the bare minimum in that case and that's pretty much all you need to do to support. But again, if you want to support financially, the option is in um the option is on Patreon. Uh so yeah, that's that does it. Uh next week is Tokyo SOS and until then, this is the real Mr. Robinson telling you there's only one. <laughs>